welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 291, Desperate Times Call for Desperate Measures. From Zenata Consulting, I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. You know, Tyler, my energy level's a little low. Um, did I tell you I'm moving? Have I mentioned that to you? Yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. I am worn out. I'm worn out. There's just so much involved in this. I don't know if I can, uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm too old for this, man. This is a young man's game. This whole moving stuff, you know, I'm hiring people to do it. Don't get me wrong, but still, <laughs> it's the whole. Yeah, it's you know, a lot I'm of work very... that goes into it. You're telling me they're digging up old records from a million years ago and asking you to explain each and every little thing you've ever done. It's uh, you know, kind of yeah, crazy. I love a lot. I love loan companies. They're just absolutely the best. So uh, you have a child support order from 1996. Could you explain that? Well, yeah, I got, of course, I had a kid. Yeah, what do you, what do you, what do you, they're in the 30s. Planetary, I thought. <laughs> what do you want to know? Oh, my God. It just goes on and on. But I don't know, man. For me, I'm not like you. I'm very an organized person. Everything's in its place, you know, and everything. And so chaos, it does not do well with my psyche. So I don't know. It just did. That's hanging on by a thread. Way. I'm hanging to barely. I'm barely here, man. I'm telling you. All right. With that, let's get on with the show and move on to announcements and events. You know, it's weird, Tyler, because we really rarely have announcements. I haven't had an announcement since uh, the Zenmi Awards, but it's still, this segment is still called Announcements and Events. But uh, We really could just call it upcoming events, couldn't we? We could call it events, or I think we should just have something to announce every week, you know? We could do that. Like, could work on that. Hey, so-and-so had a baby, um, you know? Prince Charles' cancer diagnosis looks good. Just any kind of announcement we want to put in there, you know? <laughs> Let yeah, blow the blow the doors off it. Any any announcement submitted our way. Any announcement doesn't have, but it probably should have to do with Zoho. You know, yeah. Um, we have we haven't covered you know Sridhar's cars or his Cobras or we haven't had any that kind of stuff Patreon. in a while. This would be some good ones. But that being said, um, our true announcements and events they live over on Club Zanata. We've talked about Club Zanata. If you don't know about it, it's our online. Oh, social gathering place where you can hang out, ask questions of us, ask questions of our other users. I think we've got that over well over a thousand people that are participating in uh, Club Z, so you can head over there. But one of the things we also track in there is all of the events in the world of Zoho. Uh, so we'll start with those with Zanata. And uh, Azaz has changed now. Azaz is now basically its own separate thing, dropping once a week. We're not really announcing it as a show because what we're doing is we're kind of turning it into the question of the week which we'll cover on this show and we post it over there um but the crm zen show as always um continues so we've got uh, some crms coming up and then we are going to do the uh i guess we've changed this this was going to be what was it? zoho vault vault which is still a good one but uh, we're going to do something on zoho voice because we've got a lot of, of requests for zoho voice so going to do a Zoho voice webinar here on March 19th. And then uh, you and I are going to uh, change Zoho One. We always do our Zoho One full product overview. This is Zoho One and beyond. Uh, and basically, we're going to go through every single Zoho application. We're going to do that by going through our resource library uh, inside of uh, Zanata. And we'll go through that. So that's what we've got upcoming for the next couple months. And then Zoho has got a whole lot going on. Uh, so you've got Empower Social Media. That you, basically, you'll want to just head over to Club Z, look at announcements and events, click on the Zoho, and we basically keep track of all of the upcoming Zoho events as well here. So whether they are virtual, whether they're in person, we keep track of all of them here. And we'll scroll all the way down. And I, my guess is, oh, I don't see us in June. We need to update our June because in June, Zoho is doing Zoholics in Austin, Texas. So if you haven't checked that out, just uh, I think if you just type in Zoho Zoholics, it'll come up. You can go over there. And we have made the decision to be there. So we actually uh, are going to be at Zoholics. We're not going to have a booth. We'll be walking around the trade show floor. But we are going to be hosting uh, both evenings of the show directly across the street at the Courtyard Marriott. We'll be hosting a uh, little hospitality suite. So we'd love to 
have some of you stop by and say hello. So if you see uh, see us walking around the trade show floor, stop us. We'll give you a golden ticket. Get into the hospitality suite. Are we going to print up golden tickets, Tyler? I think so. Some type of ticket yeah. I think was the plan. So a, yeah, we'll be golden Willy Wonka ticket would be a good thing. You know, get you right on in there. Like that now. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. All right, and with that, let us jump right on into the news. Well, I'm not sure what's going on here, but Zoe has two announcements that are like 20 minute reads. I'm thinking this is the uh, this is Chat GPT at its worst, right? Just this feed all this in and let Chat GPT just spew it out. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they were written, but. Uh, We'll start with Zoho Desk 2024. So Tyler, a major, uh, uh, this cracks me up. I've got to say, we've got four point. We've got dot releases. We've got year releases. We have all sorts of different releases. So I didn't realize, I thought Desk was a dot release, but now it's a year release. Is that what it is? They've done dot releases before though. When they did like their full new UI, I think they called that, you know, 3.0, 4.0, something like that. So they, okay. they do a little bit of both with Desk. So this is, anyway, Zoho Desk 2024, uh, a lot of enhancements, a lot of changes. Um, I, If you don't, please subscribe to our newsletter. Everything we discuss on this show, all the stories we discuss, and stories that just don't have time to fit into this show or in our newsletter, you can kind of re- click on the links and read through all these. But what are the big highlights that they are announcing here in uh, this desk announcement that really jump out at you as major? Yes, I mean, there's a couple here, like that added some new Zia functionality, right? Some field predictions, things like that, which can be useful, right? For maybe like assigning a ticket category by reading the content of that email. Uh, they've also done for the more technical builds, they've uh, allowed you to add widgets into blueprints. Again, most people won't realistically use this, um, but if you do want to integrate things like Sprint, Soho Calendar, a couple of these third-party tools, you can now implement those. Um, One that we had talked about was a round robin sequential assignment. So this is basically the way they previously did round robin is that tickets would go to whoever had the least um, based on like open statuses. And so hypothetically, if Brett and I are in the round robin and he's clearing out tickets a lot faster than me, he will end up getting more tickets than me. Um, You know, good work begets more work, as they say. Uh, A sequential assignment is is kind of more standardized. So he's going to get one. I'm going to get one. He's going to get one. It's just going to go back and forth like that. Um, a lot of people have kind of wanted that just because you don't want to overload people just because they're doing a good job. Um, they've also done some work expanding how they track SLAs using service contracts. So really the short story there is you can create much more custom, customer-specific SLAs. Um, biggest right. one here that I do want to spend just a little bit of time talking about is the addition of custom modules. Um, so... Custom modules in Desk, essentially like CRM, you'll be able to create a full, fully new module, a new set of data within Zoho Desk. So a couple use cases that I'm, we're definitely going to use this for, things like tracking tickets for a particular location, right? So you might have a customer and they have these five different sites and you need to know which site we're doing work for. Previously, you would have had to create like multiple versions of that account, in desk to split those out, which is not advisable, right? Just because they are all the same company. Another big one that Zoho will need to make a couple tweaks to this to make it work, but tracking like serialized items. Um, Lots of customers, especially with like, um, you know, technical support, you might have device IDs, you might have a serialized generator on a site that needs servicing, whatever those uniquely serialized items are. Um, using a custom module, you can sync those over and then actually connect your tickets directly to that unique piece of um, stock that might be uh, you know, distributed out to a customer where you need to provide service. Um, that's the biggest one, at least for me, that I've seen on here. Other ones are really nice, you know, customizing ticket number and things like that. Um, some of these are interesting because they've actually been marketplace apps like this parent-child ticketing. That was previously rolled out as their little plugins, but now they're rolling it out as a native feature that you can activate. Um, cool thing about the parent child, you can like mass close them out. So let's say like you have an outage at a location, right? And you could define, you get 10 tickets about it, right? From 10 different people saying that there's an outage going on. If you nest all those tickets under a parent child, it makes it really easy to mass close and respond to all of them. 
right? So when that outage is restored, you can just very easily mark all of them as completed um, and send out those notifications to everybody. Yeah, it's a, uh, there's a lot here, but if you're watching us on YouTube, I am doing a very slow scroll as Tyler's been talking. I'm about halfway down the page as we kind of go through all this, but I would just suggest you take a look at it because they have made a lot of enhanced, the sandbox environment, um, is that working? Uh, I haven't played with it yet, but it is totally new, which um, will be really nice. A lot of people do run a lot of integrations to desk that are great to be able to test in a sandbox environment first. For sure. And to have that, it used to be just CRM really had a sandbox. Have they rolled out to anything else besides desk now? Or is it just CRM and desk? So, I mean, there's technically a creator sandbox. It gets a little wonky with really big applications. Um, but no, I don't think there's, they don't have sandboxes for every app. One day, my my dream is they'll have a sandbox for a Zoho One environment, but I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> I understand that, that would be very difficult from a technical perspective to uh, to build that be, out. Well, because of the uh, disparate databases across all the applications, it might be quite messy, I would think, right? Otherwise, you could just spin exactly. off. You could just spin off your own clone of it and kind of into it. But yeah, uh, all right. So that is the absolutely massive Zoho Desk 2024 announcement. I suggest you read through it if you're a desk user. A lot of great enhancements here. One thing we have to give Zoho credit for is they. It, it's interesting. Sometimes there are just requests that they pile up, they pile up, they pile up, they pile up, and you look, and these requests have been there for years, right? And then sometimes you get these requests and they're just done almost immediately, but they eventually get to them all, it seems like. So um, anyway, a whole bunch of uh, changes to desk, nice enhancements. So take a look at that for desk users. All righty. And then moving on, we've got some new functions in the formula builder in Zoho CRM. And there's uh, several that are mentioned here. One that's not mentioned that you really wanted to talk about, but as a... Uh, person who builds formulas in CRM. Tyler, anything uh, grabbing you? Yeah. So a couple of these are going to be nice to have. It's like an is empty check, you know, pulling the month out of a date field, right? A couple of those will surely be useful. Um, I'd recommend anyone kind of read through the article in full to see all of the little kind of minor adjustments and tweaks and improvements that they've added to the functions. The most important one is in this what's next section. And so this isn't released yet in the comments. I think I think they said Q3 of 2024, um, but they've added, they're going to be adding a now function, which will essentially be able to recalculate formulas on a regular basis. Um, one of the big issues with formula fields is they only recalculate if there's an update to a field in that formula. So if you had something like a formula field and you wanted to know the days since the closing date of a deal, it will only calculate when that closing date is updated. It won't recalculate every day. Um, and it sounds like this now formula would actually trigger a recalculation on a regular basis of that formula, um, which would make it usable, right? Because the reality is the formula I described there of like calculating days since closing doesn't work with the current formula right. implementation because it's not a date that you're expecting to change, right? Like we closed it on a date that's it. That's the date. Um, so this will be really nice to have. There's a lot of use cases where you need these to recalculate over time. So I did just want to highlight that, that that uh, not released yet, but is on the hit list to be released soon. All righty. And going on to the next kind of major update here, Zoho CRM, the Q1 2024 update. This is, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, a 28 minute read. Um, it is a lengthy uh, uh, article on a whole bunch of things. Many of these things we've kind of covered and we've talked about as they've kind of dribbled out, but this kind of puts it all together and ties it up in a bow for the things that have been released and are being released this quarter. Uh, and there's a lot. So again, Tyler, what are your highlights on this? Yeah, so a couple of highlights on here. I mean, this actions and Zoho flow is cool. They're, they're doing it as a totally separate crediting system. So you have to pay separately outside of your Zoho Flow credits to use it. So I'm not sure how many people are going to really adopt it. Um, it's kind of kind of a funky decision. Um, a lot of the big ones I think people will use primarily out of this are uh, Kiosk and Cadences. So Kiosk Studio is... Yeah, talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, it's 
For those who have used Salesforce, it's very similar to Flow, Salesforce Flow, um, which essentially is the ability to create a structured process that goes from end to end through multiple modules. So like right now, the best way in CRM to create a highly structured process would be, you know, when a lead is created, it enters a blueprint. Then when you convert it to an accountant contact, maybe the contact enters a blueprint. Then when you're ready to make a deal, that deal has its own blueprint. And then a quote has a blueprint, you know, whatever, right? You can implement these individual blueprints at various modules to do process controls. What Kiosk is essentially doing is just building the full workflow from end to end. Um, We're giving you the ability to build that full workflow um, in one structured environment. Um, So tons of use cases here. I mean, like you can see if you're watching us on YouTube, right? Like you're able to add like a search action. So at a certain point in the flow, you need to search for either a phone number or an order number. Right. And if you search for a phone, then it's going to take you to this screen based on what you found. And right. So it's just a very like guided and specific process um, that you'll be able to implement. We'll have a video coming out on this soon, kind of a deep dive on kiosk as a whole. I need to take some time and really dive into it. Um, But that will be a very, very useful feature. um, So kiosk studio does not have anything to do with a kiosk. I can't really. Nope. Yeah. So don't be no. confused with kiosk by Zoho people, um, which is a check-in application that you can run on an iPad. Yeah. Totally unrelated. Kind of like, um, kind of like a kiosk, right? Yeah, I kind of like a kiosk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought this was going to be something directly connected to your CRM where, you know, you could set up a little kiosk for people at a trade show or something, but no, nothing. So why the name? Why the name? Not sure. They had a couple name ideas. I think one of the first name ideas might have been a little too close to Flow by Salesforce, so they had to change it and somehow landed on Kiosk. Um, I guess the idea is that, like, rather than going to specific, like, record environments and list views, you just go to this, like, consolidated Kiosk kind of thing, maybe, maybe. Um, But either way, whatever we call it, it uh, should be really useful it, for it a does lot it. of people looking to we've talked, structure these processes. We've talked about cadences already. Have we already done a video on cadences yet? I think yep. so. Yeah, we've got a full yep. video walkthrough on cadences. These are simpler. This is more like outbound prospecting. You know, day one, you send an email. If they click it, go this path. If they just open yep. it, go this other path, right? And so on and so forth. I like cadences because I also think the name is good too. See, it's important. I think it kind a little of, more fitting. Yeah, I think it ties <laughs> into where we're going here. Uh, new ways to bring personalized quotes to your customers. This is with Configure Price Quote. We've already covered this. They made some changes to that. So check out previous CRM Zen shows. You can search for it easier, uh, easily. Um, yep. Anything else? Again, a twenty-four yeah, minute read here. Year and forecast. We uh, we covered these ones last week. So. Yeah, a lot of these we we have covered recently. I think the only one on here that we didn't go through before was uh, kiosks. And so, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. It should be useful for you. By the way, when is uh, rich text formatting coming to the United States? Do we know? Who knows? Who (laughs) knows? They keep talking about it. They're highlighting it, but I haven't seen it quite yet. Um, Are you going to have to redo your feels like? So if you have a large text field, are you going to have to go in and manually turn it into our rich text? I don't know that you'll be able to convert them. You might have to export and import to move them over to a new rich text field. Not sure. I'm not sure about that, but I, that's, I believe that's how they're implementing it. All right. So all right. Oh, managed currencies, we've talked about that. I'm going to keep scrolling down here. I can't think of any. I know we looked at all of this before the show. Was there anything else we wanted to cover in this? And it no, did. I think most of these we've kind of gone through over the last couple of weeks. That's about it. Anyway, a whole bunch here. If you'd like to, if you, you know, really, if you want a great summary of pretty much everything that's been updated to Zoho CRM in the last couple of months, this is, uh, this is where to look. And I have to say, this is just all that's happened in the last 60 days. It's a lot, uh, just a ton of, uh, ton of nice changes. So great job team there. And we're going to wrap up the news section of the show with a trio of Zia stories. Um, so if you don't know, Zia is Zoho's artificial intelligence. I don't know why it's not called Zia, um, but it's Zia. Yeah, but uh, so, but 
anyway uh it, it basically so they've got a couple here so one is going to identify anomalies in list views plus best mode to contact recommendations um so these are cool basically if you've got a list view you can analyze it for various things like hey it's a list view of my deals uh has any is there anything on here that that's wrong and maybe it's a date maybe it's an expiration maybe it even can, i was reading this it seems like it can even compare over time like okay. hey, you used to have this now all of a sudden the list views got such a, a lot less right um yeah. so it, it's doing kind of some interesting things there um as it uh as it goes through and then of course the best to contact over time is kind of interesting i honestly yeah. i i I like Zia. I like where they're going with it. I think they're doing a great job with it. I would prefer to be able to turn it off, though, a lot of these recommendations, right? Yeah, there's um, some of them that just, we don't use, you know? Right, like, you don't you don't care when the best time to contact is, so please don't put it up on the screen, right? Or just have the there's option. a Z. You know, we were talking before the show. There's one that's been popping up lately, and it really takes up, like, the uh, half an inch at the top of your screen, drops everything down, and puts a thing in there saying... We think we know who the best owner of this deal is. Well, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's so. Yeah, it's, we were just uh, joking about that. That, like, um, you know, I'm part of our sales process. When I get on a sales call, I create a deal. And when Brett gets on, he creates a deal. And it's a deal in a particular pipeline that designates this is like a new prospect. And yeah, randomly it'll say, shouldn't Brett be the owner of this deal? And it's like, show me one example where I created it and Brett was the owner, you know, like where, well, where exactly is this coming from? You know, that, right. that it's getting that idea. Um, yeah. A little, a little bit funky. I will say like the list view anomaly is kind of cool. There's like, you like. know, the example they give is, you know, let's say you have a list view of deals closing next month. It can give you an anomaly and say like, Hey, we're halfway through the month and this is a lot lower than normal. Right. So some right. of those kind of like pings that it can notify you about very well might be uh, useful for uh, doing, I wouldn't say forecasting, but a little bit of, of, you know, automated review of what's going on in the system. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I think you can also accomplish a lot of this. Most people don't. I mean, if you looked at our homepage dashboard, not in analytics, just the CRM homepage dashboard, we're tracking month over month, number of leads, number of deals close. So you're constantly being able to quick. I think it's an easier way to glance at things see how you're doing, where you're at, you know, if you're on track or not on track, but uh, uh, nice, nice feature. And moving on with more Zia features, Zia uh, can now predict churn um, by using descriptive reasoning with data. So churn is whether or not you're going to lose an, lose an account. Um, and so basically it is going to look at, if you're watching us on YouTube, I'm going to scroll down here. It's going to look at Hey, we think you're going to lose this customer because of after reading emails and going through the customer sentiment for service quality, competitive offers, billing issues, low data usage. That's an interesting one. Uh, fewer calls dialed compared to previous months. I don't know how we're, we're some of these are coming from. And then the preventing factors or personalized offers. So basically, you're going to set these things up. And if you are worried about customer churn, uh, this is going to potentially give you some sort of predictor uh, as to whether or not uh, you're going to lose that customer or not. The setup on this on the back end uh, has got to be pretty, there, there's a lot that's got to go into this in my opinion, you know, to yeah. really, really for this to work. Um, they're not really covering that integration in any detail or the setup of it. You know, you're connecting to you know, Google Analytics and maybe mixed panel down the road, but man, I really want to yeah. see how this would work. This could be really valuable. I just want to. Just no yeah, idea it definitely to... seems a little targeted at maybe like SaaS companies, right? That That's are, be, you know, when yeah. you look at like the way that the Google Analytics integration works, it's looking at like device logins and things like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those tools where the reality is there are going to be cases where Zia predicts high churn and maybe it shouldn't have, right? That's just the way it's going to go. But also, even if let's say 20% of the time that it suggests that someone might churn, it is real. Um, and you Good. can reach out and maybe prevent that churn. That's pretty meaningful. Um, so at the end of the day, if, if it's a good fit for your process and it's got access to the right data, surely can't hurt to turn on some type of flagging system like this. But if you do have a lot of churn in your company, that means you probably got some pretty creamy butter. So 
you know, you can just uh, just go with what you got there. Is that you're different working things? on that one? A whole story, huh? You just I really wasn't. Uh, it just popped in my head, and I said it, which is scarier, really. You know, it is. And it's yeah. a, it's so it's, it is scary to see genius in action. It, it really is. <laughs> All right, and the last Zia show, New Call Intelligence, you can quickly identify important keywords from call transcripts. Now, this is cool. One of the reasons, we're going to do voice. You know, we probably, I know you're going to do something. So we're going to do Zoho Voice as a webinar next week, right? Or next month. Yeah. But we should point out that even though Zoho Voice is its own Zoho Voice over IP product, there's also the CRM has its own telephony, a separate yeah. Zoho telephony that is not Zoho Voice. Yep. Correct? Absolutely. And yeah. It's they rebranded the Twilio. They they basically white labeled the uh, Twilio integration for CRM. Got it. I was under the impression that Zoho Voice was Twilio too. Twilio based, but Not sure. I don't wouldn't know. surprise me. I don't know. But um either way. I guess what we're talking about here is you can now using Zoho CRM's Twilio based voice over IP service, you create transcripts, right? Yep. And it and can do it for some options that are not Zoho's. Uh, I dug into the like articles behind this and it says Zio will determine if a transcript can be provided for the telephony option that you're using. So I would okay, have so to this... think most of them it would work, right? If it's if it's able to do it for some via phone bridge, it should work for most. Um, this, is... this in particular is building on top of call transcripts to highlight like key words, key metrics, right. key discussions or phrases that may have gone on throughout the course of that uh, phone call. Yeah, it's doing it's good. I mean, the, this is you've seen this everywhere. Anybody who's doing anything these days, these kind of transcripts are, you know, they're, they're super useful. Um, very, very, very useful. I mean, we've been, you know, we really don't do phone calls. All of our stuff is done pretty much through Zoom phone calls. Those Zoom phone calls are all recorded using a third party software called Fathom. There are dozens out there, right? Um, and the transcripts are amazing. I mean, the summaries of, of the calls and the key action items. And this is doing very much the same thing. How many people's, you know, are, are there any action items that need to come out of it? What do we need to do? So it's, uh, I have to say, very, uh, very cool stuff and definitely heading on a path in the right direction. I mean, just to have this completely built in uh, yeah. is, is, is going to be nice. I mean, if you're, you know, so no matter what you're using on the telephony side, uh, I think this is going to be a, a pretty, pretty interesting. And hopefully it works with those. I can't imagine. It's got to be file. Do you think it's maybe be the file format it has to read to determine if it can read it? Because a transcript, because a, a call recording, call recording is a call recording, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm thinking that it would probably work with most most telephony providers. Um, you do have to turn on. There's like a setting in your phone bridge integration to store the call recording and transcript. So you need to turn it yeah. on there. Um, but yeah, I would have to think that it's going to work most of the time. Coolio. All yeah. right, Tyler, that's going to wrap up the news. And with that, let's head on over and check out the implementation of the week. What are we back to? All righty. Implementation of the week for this one comes from Hunter, Colton, and Jason on the Zanata team. Um, this is essentially building out a custom related list in an accounts module to show all tasks from child records. Um, so the use case here is essentially in this account, you know, we've got uh, accounts, contacts, uh, deals, some of those standard uh, modules that all roll up to an account. Um, but we also have a lot of custom modules, right? Things that are pretty unique to the particular business process that this customer has. Um, but those custom modules will also link to a particular account that they're relevant for. And particularly the challenge here was that this client uses a lot of tasks. It's a really important part of their workflow. And tasks will only roll up to the account when they're connected to default modules like contacts and deals, uh, but they do not automatically roll up for a custom module. Cool thing is using XML, we can create our own custom related lists. And a lot of the times we do this to maybe pull in data from Zoho Analytics, you know, like a common one is, 
sync QuickBooks Online into analytics and then use these to show transactional records within CRM without having to like sync them in, right? And actually create records for them. Um, but you can also just create a custom related list that just pulls CRM data, but just in a different format or based on a different rule set. So in this case, essentially, when a user loads an account, the XML related list fires off and makes a search of all of those child records of the account and grabs any tasks that are related to those module entries that ping this account. Then it wraps those up in HTML formatting and displays them on that account record. And essentially we can create any type or we can include any data from that task. So the subject, the due date, who's responsible, what the status is. Uh, We can also include which module it came from because we know where we pulled it, right? So like this is a task from a deal. This is a task from a contact. This is from, you know, custom module type one. um, And all of that can just be visible and displayed at the account level. Um, we've done similar things like this for for like notes, note records as well, right? Just things that they do all roll up natively through like the contact uh, account and deal hierarchy. <clears throat> but when you have a pretty custom system with a lot of unique custom modules, it just doesn't always work that way. Like a common use case is like properties, right? Like uh, under a certain account, they have these five properties and we need certain data to roll up. Um, and you can make an automation where like, when a task is closed on a property, it copies itself to the account. So you have this like historical log, but now you have like two versions of the same task, right? And it's not really a best practice. So just being able to display the data uh, based on a custom rule set, uh, we found to be really, really useful for this build. Yeah, this is slick. I mean, there's just a million uses for this. You talk about notes. I mean, you know, maybe somebody just has a... Uh a text field across various records, right? That's common. And they want to yeah. pull all those together or something like that. I mean, I love this implementation. Yeah. Very, very nice. Like a big one we did. I, I think we did an implementation of the week on it a little while back, but was, um, you know, how in the CRM deal, you've got like estimates, sales orders, and invoices that show up. Well, yeah. what about a company that back orders a lot of product or drop ships a lot of product, right? Well, now the salesperson in the deal, they kind of need to see the purchase order too. Because the customer is going to call in and go, where am I at? What's my expected delivery date? Whatever, right? Those questions they have that aren't going to be on a sales order. Those are going to be data that's unique to a purchase order. So you can add a little custom related list that gets all the sales orders related to that deal, gets the purchase orders related to those, and then shows them on the deal. Um, And it's a lot smoother than trying to like brute force that data into like a custom purchase order module, right? Where like things keep having to sync back and forth and send data. Um, ends up being a lot smoother to just use one of these to display it natively. Very nice. Very good stuff. All right. Nice job, Hunter, Jason, Colton. And with that, let's head back over to Club Z and look at our code share of the week. And here we have a very highly specific code share that Eddie has given us today. So Eddie is our widget guru, uh, basically. So if you're building out a widget in your CRM or elsewhere, and you would like to, uh, with CRM widget, and you would like to have the widget color match the CRM theme color, well, here is the code for you. You uh, Basically, this will just go out, grab the theme color, and uh, make the widget the same theme color. Short little bit of code, but kind of cool. Yeah. Again, with these code shares all over there on Club Zanata, I always just imagine back when I was teaching myself Deluge a couple years ago, when you find that magical forum post that just solves all your problems, uh, this feels like one of those, right? Where someone's, you know, knee deep in widget development and they just can't figure this out and boom, there it is. Copy paste it and make a tweak or two and uh, your problem is solved. So make sure to check out the code share over there. We do. Uh, really love posting useful snippets for everybody. And, you know, we got a client from this. It was funny. I uh, had a call with someone this week who signed up with us, super nice fellow. And he basically has been a member of Club Z and he's used our YouTube channel and he's done everything. And he's like, I've got it this far. And you guys have taught me, I never would have got this far. I never would have been able to do it, but now let's take it up to the next level, you know, kind of thing. Um, 
yeah. there's a lot here. But he he said this saved him. You know, it, if you want to do some of your own stuff, I'm telling you, I think we're we're making it easy. We're you can save a ton of money by just kind of going in here and watching our videos and doing all of that as well. I think there's a there's a lot there's a lot here. So nice job, Eddie. And one more time, I'll tell you, if you haven't, please head over to Club Zanata, join Club Zanata. Uh, we would love to have you here. All we ask is your email. We're not going to spam you when you sign up. All you're going to get is our weekly newsletter. That's it. Um, we're not going to sell your name, but we'd love to have you over here participating in our community and uh, just talking to, uh, I don't know, talk, talking with our group. By the way, Ragul, man, thank you for dropping in. One of our newer guys, he has become a uh, just a wealth of knowledge, answering questions left and right. That's what I love about this community you never expect people are just dropping in, answering other people's questions, helping them out. I mean, uh, and uh, I have not seen any spam in our entire, uh, maybe I'm jinxing us, but we've no, been very lucky. Yeah, I really don't see any. I think there was like maybe one one case of it a long time ago and Freddie or Wayne caught it pretty quick and, and fixed it up. Yeah. But yeah, everyone seems pretty legit, just helping each other out, asking their questions and uh, yeah, it's a great little community if you are a fellow Zoho nerd or aspiring Zoho nerd. Yeah, no trolls in here either, other than Greg, of course, bumping around here. But yeah, well, that, Greg breaks his own problem, but uh, yeah, but great that, little community. Fantastic. All right, and with that, uh, let's head over to Zanata.com and see what's going on over there. This is really just me setting up uh, three videos that we, re we released this week. So over here at Zanata, <laughs> we'll start with this one. Uh, our blog of the week is actually a recap of the Zoho Recruit 2024 full product tutorial that Greg did. So this was kind of this our webinar that was done. And uh, basically, Greg did it by himself. One man show, 42 minutes, uh, tour de force on Zoho Recruit. If you don't know, we don't talk about this app a lot because there are not a lot of updates to it when there are. We love this app. We use this app. It's uh, a lot of our clients use this app. So if you are uh, recruiting, if you have Zoho, if you have Zoho One, it's included in Zoho One and uh, yep. well worth watching this. Yeah, they have improved this so much over the last few years with so much, you know, a lot of the things that they've added into it that, uh, and they even have an agency version of it now. Um, so yeah. there's some really nice, really nice features here. So Greg's going to take you through all of that. Absolutely. Basically, it's CRM for hiring. Um, it's got a lot of the <laughs> same, you know, scripting, automation capabilities as a CRM. It's just kind of built yep. for hiring processes instead. Yep. And it does a nice job. All right. And with that, also, if you don't know, Club Zanata or over at Zanata.com, I do want to point this out. We talk about our YouTube channel. These videos are all on YouTube. Um, we've completely revamped our resource library. And as a matter of fact, not not in, in April when Tyler and I were going to go through uh, all of the apps in the resource library, discuss them, why they're ranked the way they are. Uh, and this is updated all the time. So we have our, we've read down this to definitely, probably, and maybe on the uh, Zoho applications. We give you our reasons for these apps. But one of the cool things about the resource library is if you click into any specific application, um, we basically then, all of the videos are categorized here for you. Now you can go search for them over on our YouTube channel, but we break them down on getting started and how to, and you know, they're, they're neatly put together. We constantly update this. Every time we have a new video, it gets placed over here. It gets placed in the appropriate container in the resource library. So check that out and we hope you find it useful. And with that, let's get to our tip of the, oh, is it the tip of the week? That tip of the week. Too? Tip of the week. <laughs> I love how Freddie saw us floundering there, so he just ra ran the transition. <laughs> He's like, yes, it is well, tip of the week. <laughs> you guys had, I was gone last week, you added in a whole new segment. I wasn't sure what order we were doing those in. So, gosh, Tyler, you've been busy. Um, so you did a video on uh, basically how to set up your help center in Zoho Desk? Yeah, kind of a, a quick run through of where all of the settings and features are throughout the course of the help center, you know, like everything from enabling different single sign on options, capturing metadata, um, email templates of what things are going to look like when you invite somebody, um, how to set up a couple settings, like should people automatically be invited when they create a ticket? Should there be an approval process? Kind of 
things that oftentimes we get as questions that are just very non-obvious in the settings themselves. Um, we covered a little bit about some of the design and look and feel options of the theming. I was surprised to see it, the theme section of this is like exactly the same as it was a couple years ago. Um, so yeah. if you're listening, maybe you just give this kind of a refresher. They're, they're not super customizable. They work. Everything looks fine. But it was I was surprised there were more themes than there were last time I made a video on this a couple of years back. Um, but yeah, a bit of a quick video. You know, we don't go too crazy in depth on the settings, but an overview of where to find access and customize most features of your help center. Yeah, I mean, if you're getting started with Zoho Desk, this should go right up to the beginning on the getting started area, which this video, I wonder if it's already there. Should be. I don't know. Um, and let's move right on to our question of the week. All right, so the question of the week is basically Azaz. What we've done is we've taken Ask Zanata anything about Zoho, and we are now doing uh, four questions a month, basically, on this. We're dropping one a week. We're taking the very, very, very best questions, and we're kind of giving them a little extended time. So in Azaz, we used to do eight questions, kind of run through them all in a couple of, each one to get a couple minutes each. These are getting a little more time, more of a deeper discussion. So this one is, how do I reclassify old transactions away from sales in Zoho Books? Um, and so basically, uh, Greg and Landon are going to do a screen share, step you through the entire thing, take you through the entire process. Um, these are kind of extended tips of the week, but these are very specific tips of the week and answering very you know, specific questions and uh, pretty I think this is going to be, I hope you guys find it useful. You know, that crazy morning where I, I'm running out of the shower screaming, Azaz, Azaz, you know, I don't know. Has it been worth it, Tyler? Do you, you know, I know you've been on I the think fence. So. Yeah, I think so. The clubs and yeah. I like the, uh, all the engagement on the clubs and auto side. So yeah, it seems yeah. like people do find it, do find it useful. Nice. So anyway, please head over to our YouTube channel. That is where you will find all of the videos that we put out relating to Zoho, and it is all things Zoho. We have a pretty regular cadence. You're always going to get at least four videos a week. You're going to get a CRM Zen show. You're going to get a tip of the week. You're going to get an Azaz, usually one other in there. Sometimes then we're going to throw in a webinar. Um, it's constant, and we're listening to you. So if you go over to Club Sonata and you say, hey, we'd love to see a video on this. We listen to you. Um, we're constantly searching, figure out what 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 you guys need to see and what you'd like us to put out there for you. I uh, want to thank our 15,300 plus subscribers. We're up to 632 videos. We're just a machine. Look at that. Just turning them out. So anyway, head on over to youtube.com slash Sonata. Check us out. Subscribe. Ring the bell so you don't miss another video. Uh, and, of course, always leave comments. We would love to hear from you. Wow. There it was. Look at that. There it is. It seems like a long show. I know we, we did a whole bunch of talking before the show, but I can't remember. Anyway, yeah. how long was it? It seems like, what, three hours? Four minutes. hours? Is that, yeah. is that how long we've been going? Yeah, I don't know. Part. It's at 43 minutes right now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And so all of that was precise there was no fluff in there no, no filler it was just no, giving you the nothing. information you needed All when you steak, needed no sizzle no that's it that's right no fat on this steak whatsoever all right well thank everybody so much for tuning in to our show if you would like to speak to somebody about zanata about how we can help you with your zoho installation please head over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting we'd love to talk to you and on the website is where you'll also find full episodes of the show, as well as links to all the stories we discussed today. Uh, if you want that news delivered to your inbox every Monday morning, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. And last but not least, we always appreciate when you like and subscribe here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Take care, everybody.